three days, there has been an explosion of new faces to my page. I think I've got face cream on my eyebrow. Yes, it was face cream. Um, and I wanted to address a few things that many of the new followers to my channel will not know about me. Um, and it, so it might be long. It's a little bit of a story of where I came from and what makes me tick creatively, all sorts of things. Um, just to get to know Jonathan Matt Mendes, the face behind um, my channel. So, from the beginning, from the top, you don't have to stay with me. This is more or less for anyone that's new to my channel that has enjoyed recently some of the tutorials I need to colour my hair. That's one interesting fact about Jonathan Matt Mendes. I am a practicing hairdresser. So for 25 years, I've been a hairdresser and eight years ago, I decided to pick up a can of chalk paint just after a severe back operation. I was recouping and I decided to pick up a can of chalk paint and paint some furniture. And I bought a can of, I think it was Annie Sloan Old White, painted a piece of furniture and I thought, great coverage, terrible finish, why is it so chalky? And silly me, didn't read the instructions, I didn't realise that you had to wax afterwards with chalk paint, so that's where my journey began with chalk paint and why I'm so passionate about chalk paint. Um, it, it blew me away when I learnt exactly what that kind of paint could do. So that's where it began, probably, I think it's about eight years ago now for me. Um, so yeah, that's how I started chalk painting. I still have my day job. This is not my full-time job. So forgive me if I don't come back to all of your lovely comments because there is many, many, many of them. And like I said, I think we've just had over, or I've just had over the last four days, about 3,000 new subscribers. Something I must have done right, I don't know. Um, it's probably to do with algorithms and um, YouTube has just seen that many of you got engaged with one of those videos. So back to who am I? So I am UK based, North East Lincolnshire. Um, I, uh, this is my home and I'm doing, actually, this is what I'm doing today. And I just thought I'd jump on paperwork. How boring is paperwork? So that's for the hairdressing. Um, I'm UK based and my journey started with that one can of paint. Soon enough, I, um, I started posting um, on other platforms images of my work. It grabbed the attention of none other than Annie Sloan. And we corresponded for some time and um, she was a great support to me. And before long, I became one of Annie's painters and residents. Now, she does a scheme where she chooses people for, um, it's so nice, such a nice presentation, great teacher. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I want to address all of the lovely comments in a little while. Um, so she basically asked me to bring something unique to her paint and residence scheme. She only chooses probably, I think it's about three a year, and you go away with your own thoughts with the product and create a collection um, in a online gallery. And that's what I did. And the work, if you do search that out, it's a long time, it was 2017 that was. Um, if you look for my work, it's very different to what you might see here on YouTube. There's a little hints of it there. I really pushed myself out of my comfort zone with those projects. So, um, the leather look chair. The leather look chair. Hi Jonathan, I'm new to your channel. I'm enjoying very much. Another, thank you very much. Another interesting fact I'll come to. If I, I'm gonna, Forgive me if I don't read all of the comments. So the leather look chair was part of Painter and Residence. It was fabric painted. So if you're new and you haven't seen that on my channel, there is um, painted fabric with chalk paint to create the look of leather. Now that is one of the projects that I did for Annie. And I think probably the one that baffled people so much way back then um, and probably got me noticed quite a lot on other platforms. Rolling back to about that time, I um, started um, to post on YouTube some of my um, creativeness here 
and sharing that with many people. And many people might remember that. Some of my old followers might remember me in the garden at our old house painting in the garden. They're still on the channel. Those videos, I look back and I almost cringe at those videos, but I leave them because it's part of my journey. I've progressed, I've learned so much um, more. I can't see that coming, it's gone. Um, I've progressed so much more in my creative ability, but they're still there. So if people want to source them and look back at them, please do take away what you will from them. Um, I'm not gonna delete them. It's all part of the long journey. So I did uh, a couple of years of YouTube videos, not many, not many at all. Um, I suppose I never, I felt like I was a bit of an imposter when it came to teaching. So they're out there, they are what they are. And then I stepped away from this channel. I stepped away from YouTube and started working on my other platform. So on the other social media platforms, I have higher following and many people know me there, not as much as here. Um, so, and that was quite successful, which then led me onto interesting facts about me. The Annie Sloan family network, the stockist, the distributors globally were really keen to ask me to come and teach in relevant countries. So for a couple of years, I traveled um, quite extensively. I'm not proud of my air miles, although, you know, my carbon footprint probably is quite bad. I did over 70 flights in just under two years teaching. Um, I do think I can offset that though, because I'm teaching people to save from landfill and repurpose furniture. So I think it kind of balances. I feel okay about that. Um, so I taught all over Europe, South Africa, Australia, many different places. So whilst I was busy doing that, I was also thinking about how I could um, make um, some, stop the traveling really, slow the traveling down and teach in a different way. So I, I built an online school, the uh, Jonathan Matman is Painted Love Academy, which those videos went out for about, I was really concentrated on those videos and the people that invested in me at the time and I created the school of and they were online tutorials that you could purchase and follow along with me on that journey. So that was, I started filming them five years ago and they ran for a couple of years, maybe two and a half, three, nearly three years. And um, consequently, about, about a year and a half ago, I, uh, I closed that, that business down for lots of reasons. Social media was weighing heavy on me. I had a, a mum that had a terminal illness and I decided to step away from everything and maybe not to ever come back to it, to be fair. Um, although creativity was always running through me and it was an amazing support to me when times were really really tough you know so i never stopped being creative but i just didn't share with people until um the so i will read your comments thank you so much um so over time i just I slipped away from it for about a year and a bit and it was really tough it was just tough times and like I said, I focused on the house, focused on my mum, focused on my family until that sad day came. And um, then somebody reached out to me, one of my friends in the industry reached out to me and said, would you like to produce some decoupage papers, which has happened, they're out there now. Posh Chalk Interiors Deluxe Papers, there's a, a the House of Mendes range, that exists if you wanna go uh, source that. I may be able to link it into the comments afterwards. Um, so she basically, brought me back from non-existence on social, all of the social platforms and allowed me to be still creative and feel a uh, presence in this, in this world of furniture painters and artists. And consequently, so that was um, probably, when was that? That would have been just after mum's passing, which was uh, July time last year. Um, so we're not quite a year. And, um, I came back into and of course when when you're you know you're grieving for a loved one what better way to um kind of help yourself is creatively and that's what i did so i went back to um youtube which 
I, I just felt like coming back to YouTube was the right place for me. It was where I get the source information of learning. I mean, where do we go when we need to learn something? We go, if, even if it's just how to set up the remote control to your TV, you head to YouTube and learn from there. So that's why I went back to YouTube. I created one or two new tutorials and they seem to be quite popular with my existing following. And um, I just decided, right, well, this is kind of the right platform. I wasn't giving up the other platform. So if you do want to search me on the other platforms, all of my um, business names is Jonathan Mark Mendes Painted Love, not just Jonathan Mark Mendes. I should never have named my business after my own name. That is stupid because people always look um, for me and not Jonathan Mark Mendes Painted Love, and it's a mouthful. <laughs> so I should have shortened it, but it is what it is now. So go and check them out. There's lots of content on other platforms as well. So back to YouTube and it felt, it felt really good. It felt right to be in this forum because I think it's the, the teaching forum. Um, and yeah, let me go a little real back. I don't, well, I'll, I'll catch that in a minute. My brain's all over. This is my creative brain. My brain brain it just it doesn't think forward it thinks sideways sometimes um so yeah that is the journey that's why i'm here consequently going back to the academy that had been closed down for about a year and i put it out there to many of my academy stu students how would they feel regarding me not allowing that content back out into the public domain here for free because they'd invested in me and I really felt uncomfortable about maybe putting out there. And then somebody said to me, my husband, he buys a boxing match on, on the TV and then a few months later you can do it for free. And I thought, yeah, that's logic, isn't it? It's, you know, and plus the fact the content was filmed, it was filmed five years ago. So it's dated. Many things have changed in in this, if you're in the furniture painting world or creative world, you will see how quick things change, and it certainly did. So I was feeling like some of that content was good, but it was also slightly dating. So what I decided to do was go back into that content and freshen it up with some new voiceovers. You know, try to bring it more to present day. Um, and allow it to go. So you guys, many of you new followers have found that content and uh, are really excited about it. And that's why the numbers on my um, channel have gone up so quickly. And I think mainly the two things that have really captured your attention, hi Shaz, is the, um, the fabric decoupage and the napkin decoupage. Now, when I, when I did that tutorial, the napkin one, there was no um, decoupage or transfers even happening at that point. So it is, I felt it was really dated, but you guys absolutely love it. So it was the last one to go out there. There is 14 more. If you've not, if you've only found that one, please check out the channel, subscribe, and go into my back catalogue. There's hours and hours of content there, which may be of use to you lovely people down there. Um, so that is my journey. <clears throat> what else do I have to say? I'm going to give you a few little facts about myself that's, not many people know. Hairdressing was one of it, and I do this only three days a week, so bear with me, I have two sides of a job. Uh, the other known fact, many people that follow me elsewhere will know this, is I'm severely dyslexic. So that throws out some challenges when creating content. Um, so I'll make an apology now. Um, most of what I put out there in um, text, all in fact, is voice predicted into my phone and sometimes it doesn't quite get right so occasionally you know and spelling and grammar i apologize for those things it's just who i am it's it's allowed me to do this um, by doing it that way so forgive me for random text you know i have been pulled up for it a few times it is what it is it's just who i am we can't at all. My creativity outrules my academic sort of typing and texting. Um, so it, it's one of those things. So that's one unknown fact about me. So forgive me for that. Um, 
it's um, it's never hindered me really. I you know I just get on with life and enjoy being creative. So hence this stuff I hate. So that's why I'm here talking to you because I thought it'd be more fun to talk to you guys. So that's one of the things. What else? Mm, what else about me? So you've learned about my journey, who I am. <clears throat> uh, one thing. Oh, there's another good fact about myself. I have have no formal art background or training whatsoever. I am no different to the average creative that searches for wonderful content on platforms like YouTube and just goes for it. So that's who I am. I'm a little bit, you'll see in my videos, sometimes as happy accidents happen, I, I like to delve into, <clears throat> excuse me, a frog in my throat, it's morning here in the UK. I like to delve into those happy accidents sometimes and turn them into something special. So that, that's quite a thing for me. So no art background, I'm just no different to anybody else. I'm just super creative and really enjoy the art of painting furniture. So I want to say a big thank you to everybody that's just jumped on board and all of the people that have stayed with me from the past you know they've stuck around for a long time some of these some of them are like eight year followers and they're still here so i want to thank everybody for that the numbers have gone really high quite quickly and welcome everybody that's new and i wanted to give this sort of little bit of background of who i am and what makes me tick and I suppose I want to address all of those amazing comments. So the dys dyslexic thing is, sorry if I'm, you know, spelling things wrong and it, it's hard to decipher. Uh, the other thing is, sorry if I'm delayed because so many comments, I think just those two videos, there's, you know, nearly 250 comments on them and I do try and respond to everything. That leads me to, as well, because I'm quite the numbers have gone up quite quickly. The video is probably jumping in front of people that, um, you know, some people that are not so into painting as well. I've had probably, I'm really lucky, I've probably had about five, what I portray as negative sort of comments. Um, I want to address negative comments. This is a public forum. I put it out there. I'm a big boy. I will take anything um, constructive criticism is great because it opens a doorway to um, answering questions, you know, brainstorming between one another. I love that. So when somebody pulls me up and says, oh, I, why would you do that? And I would do this. Great. That's what it's for. Because what I've realised is people read through those comments. It's qu quite interesting that, and people put their own, um, their own ways of doing things. I absolutely welcome all of that. Absolutely. But I've had one or two that were a little bit sharp. And um, it's, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. It's it's just sometimes I think people maybe want a little bit of attention. So that's why maybe they do. I don't know. People do strange things. I personally wouldn't go onto anybody else's platform and kind of dumb down their creativity in any what way. You take away... And that leads me to another thing. You take away from my channel whatever you wish. Um, I had a conversation with a lady this morning. I won't mention any names. And if you're watching, that's it's great, you know. But she said to me, I noticed that you uh, were sloppy on the corners and this, that and the other. I don't, I don't portray myself as the greatest artist in the world. What, what you'll get from me is, you know, some of my, I don't finish the interior sometimes. My journey went on a teaching journey and teaching, when you talk about teaching, yes, you need to teach correct things, of course. I, I, I don't wanna teach wrong things, of course not. But it's, to me, my teaching is about planting seeds. I've always said it's like planting seeds. I plant a seed in, in your mind and you grow it in your own way. That's exactly what I do on this uh, platform. I take many other YouTube ideas and you know, scramble them all together and make them my own. So that's how you probably see sort of so many interesting things. So planting seeds is what I do really well. I love to see other people creatively grow and you take away whatever. It might be one half of a tutorial you think that's really interesting, but that was rubbish and that's fine. Um, that's what it's all about for me is literally 
giving um, my, my subscribers just ideas to walk away. And I suppose when you've walked away with that idea, it's up to you how, what level of finish that you give to your projects and how far you take it. It's very, um, the furniture painting world, there's many different um, lengths of finish and how high that you go, whether you're selling furniture. I, I don't paint to sell furniture. I do let my pieces go. Many of them live with me, but most of them I let go at really low cost because I'm here doing this. This is what my focus is, is creating something that you can take away and then using your projects. Also, I do notice that, um, not that I've had it through these few, but I have in the past people that, um, I have actually I had it once here, um, somebody that had made slight comments towards um, painting over um, old pieces of furniture, great, painting over great pieces of wood. And um, I, I understand that. I know how people feel about wood and how, I had one lady that said to me um, that she was a pure, she came back and more or less apologized. She said she was a purist and uh, for wood. And, and I, I didn't respond back, but I kind of smiled to myself and thought, purist painting over, you know, uh, um, wood. And, you know, it's very interesting how, if you look at the past of furniture and where it stems from, and, you know, if you, it's only been in the last few hundred years that you really um, see um, wood that was finished to such a high, um, where wood is shown, because if you go further back, you'll find right back to maybe the Egyptians even, they were embellishing good wood with um, hieroglyphics and um, beautiful different um, paints. And I traveled to Sweden, I went to a stately home in Sweden where every surface was painted, every good piece of wood was painted. So that made me feel more comfortable about painting furniture. So yeah, I understand. I, I have wood. Look, this table is wood. It's been refinished by me. It was once mahogany. It's now what looks like a, a lined oak. Um, I love wood. There's, uh, you know, to me, it's it's really important that we have the chairs of wood um, with a, a, a white wax over the top. <clears throat> so yeah, I understand that. I hear you. I feel you. Also, this is a global platform. Here in the UK, we have lots of old furniture. We have the history behind us. We have lots and lots of pieces of old furniture. And just at this moment in time, um, dark is really not fashionable. And some of the pieces that I've, I've come across were heading for landfill. They were going, no matter what, they were going away and they were not gonna be um, loved anymore in any what way. So sometimes, you know, when you see us in the UK painting over what appears to be good wood there's two things going on there it, it quite possibly is that that was at the end of its life and it was going anyway so um it's being saved it, with paint and it's having a new lease of life and being re-loved again also we have a lot of uh, masses of amounts of reproduction furniture that many of them look really good and they are there there is lovely uh, veneers over the top and the wood looks awesome um, I think the decoupage piece that you just saw um, just recently, if any of you watched that, that piece of wood was actually a veneer. It was, it looked like an old piece, but it, it, it was made of chipboard inside. So there's many, you know, people mistake that sometimes as good pieces of furniture. I, I suggest people that love wood, don't watch me, <laughs> don't subscribe, go and find a wood refinishing channel. Um, no offense, it's, this is about pure creativity and, and changing furniture with paint. So if you are one of those people, don't subscribe. Go and find some wood finishing or stand at your local um, tip and save all of those pieces and take them home and, and secure the, the life of them in your home. You know, because I feel that us painters, are, that's exactly what we're doing. So that addresses that. I make it sound like I've got a problem with negative comments. I haven't, as long as there is no swearing or I think that's too personal, I'm all up for anyone to um, ask the question. Um, you're welcome, all of the comments are truly welcome. And I, if you notice, I try and respond to everybody, everybody at least, even if it's just a, a smiley face. So that's me. 
Um, anything else that I've got to address? Um, hmm, what would you like to know? I, have a, I can't get the comments back. I know that you've been commenting on here. I will go back and look at the comments. Um, yeah, I'm having a, a break for a week or so. All of the Academy tutorials are now out there. There's 14 of them, so go back and look for them. I will be back recreating new tutorials. As you can imagine, it takes me a long time. Some of these tutorials, I hate it when someone cringes if you paint. Yeah, it's a strange thing. I, I, I understand it. It can be very, you know, people do love wood and I do. There's wood there, there's wood in my house. Of course there is. I live in an Edwardian house um, and the Edwardians were, they love paint. In fact, my doors are stripped back to wood, um, but every surface was painting just bar a few pieces like the mill post and the handrail in the house. So, you know, it's not, it's not a, a new thing painting over things. And I, I really do understand when people see it. I, I get it, I completely get it. But equally, it's not gonna stop me from um, my journey. Um, love your videos, YouTube, inspiring. Thank you very much from Te East, East Texas. So this is another thing that you'll find for me. With being dyslexic, I stumble over reading sometimes and it doesn't come out right, so I apologise if I don't read your comment right. Um, yeah, where was I? I'm rambling on. This is something that I do on lives. I ramble on, and but I really wanted to kind of say welcome to everybody and thank you so much for everything. All of those lovely, lovely comments that they truly have you brightened my my week this week so thank you for joining me here and like i said i do this for probably different reasons and that is just to inspire and allow people to kind of go off on their own journey it, it's what makes me happy um when i see those lovely comments back and the engagement with you of course please be sure to you know, if you're not subscribed, please please be sure to subscribe, hit the notifications bell because when I do get around to those very long tutorials with lots of talking in, which pe people seem to like, maybe that's why I'm achieving on this platform. Um, you know, TikTok's not for me, I, I'm just not quick enough. I, I like to, I'm a, I'm a visual learner like most. To be, oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, I'm a visual learner, so part of visual, you'll see me waving my hands around, uh, describing with my hands, and also lots of talking, lots of voiceover, but I, th I think people like that. They feel like they've been on the journey with me, so I will keep on bringing them exactly that way until people don't want to um, watch anymore. So yeah, I will be back doing, and they take a long time, so they, they are intermittent. They take a long time to do. The editing, there's so much more behind the camera than just putting a camera up and filming it. There's so much more. So, and I only wanna bring really good content to you that's worthy of people using it in whatever way they wish. I'm just gonna have a little pause, a little thought, just to think, was there anything else that I wanted to cover off? Um, yeah, that's me. I think that's me. There's, um, you know, the person behind Painted Love, this is me, and thank you. Um, I really, I, I, I didn't think I was gonna come back to this industry just after my mum passed away, and I'm here still. So, and that's because of you guys, because of the supportive comments. It makes it worthwhile um, to stick around and keep on doing this. Um, I don't have a par se business. This is now my business. Um, in the industry. I do have one or two events that I do from time to time, one of which is a UK one suit in September. I'm heading to Germany for the fourth time in in just three weeks time. I'll be teaching there. So you may see a little bit of content from that. I might take, actually, I might take you guys on the journey. I might film the journey from leaving the house right the way through to journey, uh, to Germany and some of the um, content while I'm there because then you can see what my journey was in the past and, and that might explain um, why the following and what happened to me so um, for a time it felt like being one of the Beatles 
and jumping on planes all over the world. So I will take you on that journey. It's a good idea. I think it's um, something that people might like to watch. So that's about it. I'm going to have to go back to the other job and start doing my book work and, um, and get, get thinking about the next tutorial. For all of those that stayed right the way through this very long, boring tutorial um, conversation, thank you. So happy I found you. Lots of people keep on saying, happy I found you. I think um, YouTube put you in front of, um, I think the engagement was good, so YouTube made, made you find me. I, I don't know how, because I've not changed anything that I've been doing. So all of a sudden, lots of people have just found me. And welcome. Welcome, you're much appreciated. And like I said, all comments are welcome, including the constructive ones, because it, it opens a doorway for everyone to kind of jump, because people do jump in with their own ideas. That's exactly what I want. Um, um, just try and keep it, you know, it, you know if you want to be beyond um, constructive and, and, and more personal about whether my work is stands up or not, it's debatable, isn't it? Um, you know, head off to other people or do the same. If you, if you think you're... Um, if you think this is easy, go and set up a channel yourself and, and take the time to, um, all the time and effort that goes into creating what I put out there. It's not easy. It's not easy, guys. It really isn't. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you very much to all of the lovely new followers and the existing ones. It's much appreciated. I'm gonna jump off this very long um, talky live. I hope the connection was good. I really hope it is. Um, hello from Belgium. Hello, I'm jumping off this live now. So if you've just joined, you can go back and watch it. I think it will cover off who am I. There's lots of aspects to me that you'll, you'll learn along the way. I'm a bit cheeky sometimes as well. Um, and I am uber creative. I just love being, you know, my, when my hands are dirty and in paint, I'm happy, I'm a happy boy. Um, so, much love. I will catch you all maybe next week. I will do, I'll probably jump into another live at some point. I have got a piece of furniture that I've got to paint for us. Probably a flat finish, nothing too exciting. Um, might do that on a live just to catch up with you all because the numbers are good now and it's worth me spending time with you just yattering away. Um, so I'm going. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you everybody. Take care. I'll see you all soon.